um, n. And um, I get the subscript graphs from one to s, the number of species in the pool. And okay, these are just the usual locable terra dynamics. Um, I, you know, I'm sure you've seen them before with uh, migration from a regional species pool. And uh, of course, even in the simplest of uh, models, uh, still the matrix alpha here, or the network of interactions alpha, has tons of numbers in it. Um, you can imagine if there's 50 species, then there's more than 200, two, sorry, 2,000 numbers parameterizing this uh, matrix. And so there's uh, a lot going on, even in this simple uh, framework. And okay, this is it. Uh, later, I'll touch briefly on a few other things, on meta communities, on resource competition, on functional groups, on demographic noise. Of course, very briefly, um, you know, you're welcome to, to, I'd be happy to discuss more. Uh, I won't have any evolution, I mean, Darwinian evolution in this talk. And I'll only focus on a theory today. Now, um, I should say at this point, I welcome, please, interrupt, please ask questions at any time. Uh, I can't see the chat, so Jacopo, if there's anything, uh, feel free to, to stop me at any time. Sure. Um, okay, any questions uh, so far, anything? Okay, um, right. So the, the basic, um, the basic uh, idea uh, we're working with is that perhaps uh, um, you know, when, when there are many combined things happening, in, in my system, many interaction mechanisms, many things happening, you know, a cow goes to eat one, uh, one kind of grass and it steps on another kind of grass and so on, then maybe the system, maybe the interaction matrix of between all species in the pool would look, won't see any conspicuous order and maybe we can take it as random. Uh, this is by now a rather uh, standard step, but it's by no means a trivial one. I do not want to say that this is something that you should I believe in uh, just like that. Uh, on the other hand, if there's you know, one dominant interaction mechanism, then you can see this matrix here on the right it is very ordered, okay? So, so at least uh, there's this very strong contrast between these two cases. Um, I want to emphasize that what I mean when I say uh, uh, this very ra this maximally random matrix, and this means that all the numbers are independent random numbers, this is for the pool. So once we assemble the community, structure is, uh, formed in the assembled, the network, the assembled network, and we will discuss this in some detail. Uh, and so one way to think of what we're doing here is uh, that this uh, maximally random interactions in the pool is a null model to understand the filtering that the assembly process uh, applies to your network. Uh, is this a good starting point? At the end of the day, you just you know, you generate predictions and you check and the proof is in the pudding. And uh, I'll say a few words about uh, how to add additional orders such as functional groups, uh, uh, you know, trophic levels and so on uh, to this simplest of models. All right, uh, Jacopo, anything so far? No questions. Okay, you can go ahead. Great. Um, or actually, who, who am I talking to just so I <laughs> It's, uh, I'm Matteo Marsili, I'm chairing this session. Ah, yeah, okay. Sorry, Matteo, yeah. yeah. Because I, I was seeing Jacopo in the, in, the, in the video, that's why I was, uh, but I heard the voice, it wasn't his. Uh, excellent. Okay, um, right. So if you run this one simple model and it, it looks, you know, again, you put very little into it, you already see quite a rich phenomenology of things that can happen. So the first thing is you just run the model and uh, what you see here on the top uh, left is you see an assembly process. So you start with all the species in the, in the system. You put them, each line here in, with the color is one of the species. Uh, the x-axis is time and you can see them going up and down and you reach a fixed point. Some of the species, you know, some fraction of the species survive and others uh, go locally extinct. So that's assembly. Um, now, if you start the same, um, you run the same equations with different initial conditions, you might reach the same fixed point again and again for the same uh, you know, interaction matrix, or you might reach, di reach different uh, uh, fixed points. And that represents multiple alternative stable states um, and historical contingency uh, that, that could come with something like that. For example, dependence on the order in which you inject the species if you do it 
uh, sequentially. Uh, there are other cases, other parameter, parameters in the model where uh, you don't see the system reaching any fixed point. Instead, there's uh, dynamical persistence. Um, in fact, it's, uh, it's very high dimensional chaos. And there's even uh, uh, another behavior, which I won't talk about much, uh, where you see actually succession patterns of true directionality. Uh, uh, but again, I, I won't say much about that. Okay, so again, the, the question is, how is it that you see all these very different things in, in one, in one uh, very simple model? And uh, you know, how do you order and organize things? Um, and, and if you're a physicist, this reminds you immediately of, of this idea that um, ice and water, if you've never seen ice turn and melt into water, you might swear that these are completely different um, you know, materials, but really they're just the same thing once you change some parameter by a bit parameter called temperature. And, um, and so uh, what you're starting to think is that maybe this is what is happening in these models. And so the phase transition between a phase of ice and a phase of water would have similar things in community ecology. Uh, and the phases would be, for example, the stimulant equilibrium behavior to multiple alternative stable states, or from a single equilibrium to chaos to this uh, successional behavior. Uh, these are just examples of what might happen. All right. So uh, over the years, we've done quite a bit of work on uh, this very basic model. We know quite a bit. Uh, should say analytically, uh, properties of the equilibria, you know, total diversity, biomass fluctuations. Uh, we see that these things are set deterministically when the system size, well, sorry, when the diversity is large, uh, all kinds of things about the dynamics uh, that I will uh, be touching a bit. But what is the first important thing that I want to say is that um, what we find in all these um, calculations is that the distribution itself of these numbers alpha ij doesn't enter. Um, so it can be a Gaussian, it can be uniform, it can be anything as long as it has a mean and a variance. And so what doesn't enter in all the calculations again and again are three parameters, uh, rescaled uh, mean of the interaction. See here is the number of non-zero links. If you like, it's all the species uh, that you interact with. It can be any number as long as it's much larger than one. And then there's the variability in the interactions. Um, and then there's the symmetry of the interactions. How correlated are the, is the interaction of I on J with the interaction of J on I? And so uh, these are the parameters that drive everything. And um, system-wide properties, again, like diversity, like uh, fluctuations are fixed deterministically. Uh, in what, they're what called self-averaging quantities by these three parameters. So we have the variables. We have, we have you know, what are the uh, axes that we should start thinking about. And, um, and, and now... Um, so Guy, what, if I may, so yes. why don't you consider lambda as a relevant parameter? So the, the immigration... Right, sorry. Uh, that's a, an excellent question. Uh, so we're looking at very uh, small uh, numbers. So the strength of migration is is much smaller than all the other things. It, it's true that in, in the chaotic regime, it can enter in some very subtle way, but for fixed points, there's a well-defined, uh, at least for fixed points, there's a well-defined limit of lambda going to zero, but larger than zero, uh, which, which we can take uh, safely, okay? But it's true that if it was uh, order one quantity, then it would affect everything. Uh, any other questions that I see in the chat or something? Let's see if can I see it. Yes, Mercedes asks whether you can clarify uh, what C is. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so C, so, so uh, if we're looking at uh, matrices or, or in the interaction networks where um, some of the uh, interactions are zero, then this counts the number of interactions. We're assuming anyway here that the number of interactions is much larger than one, okay? And so, and so uh, we're also going to assume that the distribution, because it, it's a large number and we're going to assume that the distribution of this number is not very broad. So we can just take one number for that. Uh, if, you, if you like for simplicity, for everything that follows, you can take C to be equal to S to all the, everyone interacting with everyone else. And, and, and then it's just a fixed number. It's that, you know, it won't, you know, won't change anything in, the, in, in what follows. Okay. 
Okay, so, sorry. So, so in that sense, it's like the degree, right, in the network. Absolutely, absolutely. Not yes. because otherwise I confuse it with the density or the connectance, but it is the degree. It's it's it's, it's yeah. <laughs> so okay, sorry, so, that that was my questions. Uh, I yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Okay, it's the number that when you're interacting with everyone, you get s. That's uh. By the way, it's not the assembled degree, it's the degree in the network before assembly. Yeah, okay. Um, anything else? Yeah, um, Miguel also has a question yeah. on uh... Yes, okay, so I can see it now. Yes, so as I said, you need the mean and the variance to, to be finite, right? So it's not heavy tailed in, in that sense, yes. Uh, okay, so, um, um, right, so, you could ask, okay, this is an extremely you know, non-biological you know, uh, model. Uh, so um, my colleagues uh, in, in Michel Laurent's group, uh, Mathieu Barbier and uh, Jeff Arnoldi have, have looked at um, many other uh, properties of, of networks uh, that people are be, have been using and looking at how much these three numbers, if you just use them blindly, how much you get uh, system-wise properties uh, uh, correctly. And it turns out that many structures that people do use in, in, in the literature do not affect the system-wide properties very much. Um, however, there are things that matter. So if you have uh, you know, um, plants and, and, and pollinators, then this bipartite structure is very important. And then what you need to do is to extend this very simple model to the next simplest model with a few more parameters. So that's basically the idea. I'm not going to go any more into that, but uh, um, um, yeah, so that's it. There's okay. a question uh, from Monday uh, asked whether mm -hmm. uh, the distribution is in the mean or the, or the interaction strength. The distribution is in the interaction strength. So you, you have a, a, a matrix, you, have, uh, you, you sample numbers in it, and they're all sampled from the same distribution, and you fix that matrix, and then you run the dynamics. That, that's the that's the that's how it works. Okay, um, right. So uh, the puzzle. Uh, so we have the the axis for the puzzle, and now here comes the the pieces of the puzzle in 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 in, uh, in uh, with these axes. So again, so so uh, let's put on the x-axis here uh, the mean of the interaction strength. Uh, so more competitive is more to the right. And on the y-axis, this variability that I mentioned before that I call sigma. And we see uh, these different, what we can now call phases. Um, and I want to start focusing on this um, unique equilibrium phase where whatever the initial conditions you start with, you, as long as all the species are there initially, um, you end up with uh, the same fixed point, okay? And uh, yeah, so, so that's a very simple dynamics, but now I want to talk a bit about the assembly process in this uh, case. Um, all right, so, so uh, let's see what happens to the network, uh, you know, during the assembly in this case. And so, um, right, so you have, uh, sorry, the, the, the the notation here is slightly different. I'm sorry for this. So you have, uh, before the assembly, you have what I call here S pool, S sub pool species, okay? And, and uh, here for, I, I, you can slice for something from somewhere else. Here it's, it's S survivors, okay? And the S species in the assembled uh, coexisting uh, community. Uh, so, so maybe you could call it S star or something. And so for all these species, the important thing is that for all the species that have managed to coexist, for them to coexist in a fixed point, you need, first of all, the final abundances to be positive. That's, that's you know, otherwise, uh, you know, they're not really coexisting. Uh, and then the fixed point has to be dynamically stable. If you push away uh, a bit uh, by some press perturbation, small per press perturbation, for example, then you need to be able to return from that press perturbation to your fixed point. And then there's also the issue that you have to be uninvadable from the outside, but I don't want to uh, talk about that much. And now, because let's let's just focus on the coexisting species and not on the properties of those that cannot invade. Okay, and now the question is this. If we look at the matrix or the network of the, the assembled network, um, 
how is it that all these species coexist? Um, so one thing you can do is you can keep reducing the diversity of, of the assembled community. I mean, if you get to one species, certainly they, they all coexist, it's fine. But, but another thing you can do is you can add structure. The assembly itself can generate a, a matrix which is no longer completely independent random numbers. Okay? And the question is, first of all, does this happen? Does this structure exist? And if it exists, which of these requirements that we've uh, discussed before, these uh, two things, having positive abundance and stability, which of these things is affected by the structure and how, okay? And so um, it turns out that the assembled matrix is in fact not maximally random. There is structure. For example, you can show that there are correlations along rows and columns, uh, and we can calculate them analytically uh, from some pattern I'll show you uh, next. Um, and so these correlations did not exist in the pool. So assembly does generate uh, structure in the, in the interactions. So that's one thing. Um, the second thing is that these yeah, correlations so there are, there, are there, but... Uh, so... Uh, okay, let me finish the sentence and, and, and I'll... Uh, uh, the second point is that these correlations are not sufficient to explain coexistence. So if I just have these correlations, or in fact, any enrichment of some local interactions, I do not generate the full coexistence. So I need to, to it's just not a full explanation of what's going on. Uh, okay, let me look at if I can see the chat. Um, um, do you also have a stable limit cycle? Um, so we do not see stable limit cycles in the limit of large S. Uh, of large, uh, uh, of high, highly diverse uh, systems in this asymptotic limit that doesn't happen. In intermediate value, values, there is uh, in the transition um, from a fixed, single fixed point to chaos, we do see uh, limit cycles. Uh, are we taking, uh, yeah, we're only talking right now about, I'm still in the single equilibrium, single fixed point phase, and I'm looking at assembly, the effect of network structure on uh, of assembly on network structure in that case. I'm not even touching dynamics just yet. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, so, so, so those are the, so, so this is what happens. Uh, now, okay, so I said that there are these correlations, but they don't explain the coexistence. Uh, but okay, first of all, there is structure in the assembled network. Okay, that's one thing. What is this structure? And importantly, how can we cease understand what is the structure that is in fact relevant to the coexistence. So for me, the functionality in this case, what this system has to do is to coexist. Okay, so I need to understand what, are the, what is the structure that is sufficient for this coexistence. And it turns out that one way to describe it is, uh, is the following, that if you look at the assembled uh, matrix or network, it looks very much like a random network as before, but there are subtle biases in the strength of the underlying interactions. Um, in particular, oh, sorry. Um, in particular, for some reason I can't see. Um, sorry, can you tell me what the time is and, and how, uh, when did we start? Uh, just so I know how I'm doing. We started uh, five minutes late. So uh, you have uh, 20 minutes more. 20 minutes to the 35, minutes. Oh, okay, okay, good. Um, okay, so, so it turns out that the, the structure is, is uh, the following. It looks very random and it's hard to see by eye what's going on, but there's an underlying, as I was saying, uh, bias um, in, in so the guy, uh, interactions. So uh, miss my mistake. Uh, so it's 12 minutes. 12 minutes, that's also fine. Yeah, I, I, I can do that. Um, yeah. So, right. So the, this underlying pattern, this bias, of the uh, interaction strength is, is, can be understood as follows. You organize this, the, the, um, your species in the assembled network from the least successful one to the most successful one, where by success we mean the ratio of its abundance in the community to its uh, carrying capacity, to its monoculture uh, abundance. And it turns out that the abundant species uh, do not uh, are sort of specialized. They do not interact, uh, do not compete as strongly with other abundant species or with other successful species, okay? So it's sort of this, I don't know, mafia or, or you know, this, this clique uh, type of thing 
uh, whereas the unsuccessful species just compete with everyone at the same uh, at the same um, strength. So, so, so that's what you see. It's some form of specialization of the successful species. That's how I think about it. Um, okay, I don't, um, I don't want to go into uh, very much into the details, but I will say that this structure can be proven to guarantee uh, the positive abundances uh, that that the that the the interaction network has once uh, it's assembled. Um, and um, one last thing I want to say about this is that we've actually derived this same structure for completely different uh, framework and we've actually uh, validated we've seen it in uh, we've shown it, it is there in plant competition experiments and biodiversity experiments um, again this this takes us into a different uh, topic so I won't go get into it but uh, it was just published now uh, you can take a look if you're interested all right so what did we get here so before we've already seen that there is structured in the assembled network. And so the next question is which of the requirements that we've, um, that we've seen before um, you know, for an assembled network, namely having positive abundances and being stable, which of these requirements is affected by this new structure? So we said that abundance has become positive once you use the structure. Stability, it turns out, is unaffected by the assembly. Okay, and this is an important um, uh, you know, point. It's a subtle point, but, but it, it, it is important. Um, the, you know, if you, it, I don't want to get into the technicalities, but, but maybe for the experts, just in one word, you know that there's a spectrum of the matrix which affects its stability. You cannot squeeze this spectrum just by the assembly process. There's a simple reason. Uh, I'm happy to discuss this uh, later with those uh, interesting. Okay, so so what the assembly does is it affects feasibility and the abundances, but it cannot push the stability further, at least for large systems. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say about the uh, unique fixed point phase and how the assembly affects the structure of the network. So any uh, anything so far? Any questions? There is no question in the chat. Okay, good. Give another second. Okay. Good. Okay. So so now now uh, we we step we increase the variability um, of the interactions. In fact, we can increase diversity at fixed uh, inter uh, interaction uh, parameters. It's the same thing here. Um, and what we see is that we lose stability at this unique fixed point, and instead uh, we go into something new. Now, what happens now depends on the symmetry of the interactions. If the interactions are symmetric, as is often used to model uh, competition, what you get is many, 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 many fixed points. You get exponentially many fixed points in the diversity of the system. So you can have, imagine, 300 million alternative uh, uh, stable states, alternative equilibria here. This is very different from regime shifts and things like that, where you imagine one or two. So it's very many subsets of species that in fact form a stable equilibrium. Um, so I see there's a question, the correlation gamma plays role. Yeah, so, so, so right now we're talking about this correlation gamma equal to one, um, and, and, and this is uh, symmetric interactions, okay? That's gamma equal to one, uh, and, and, and that's what happens in this case. Um, okay, and Right. And uh, as advertised, this transition is indeed sharp, like a phase transition. Namely, you change the interaction parameters by a bit, and you jump from one fixed point to very, very, very many fixed, fixed points. And this, uh, yeah, okay, so, so, so it's uh, as we uh, thought it would be for a phase transition. All right. Um, right, okay, don't wanna, I don't have time for this. Right. So now I want to go, go into the case where the interactions are not symmetric. In fact, let's look at the case where gamma, the correlation is zero, so it's independent uh, effect of I on J and J on I. And then what you get is a transition into a chaotic phase. Okay? Persistent dynamics, very high dimensional persistent dynamics um, happens. It starts at a very uh, well-defined uh, strength uh, variability of interaction strength. But the size of these fluctuations grows continuously as you change the parameters. So at first, it looks almost like a fixed point. 
with small fluctuations around it, as you increase the variability, uh, you get uh, more and more uh, stronger and stronger interaction. Uh, sorry, stronger and stronger uh, abundance fluctuation. Okay, so that's the that's the phenomenology that we see in this case. All right. Um, so one word about what the mechanism is that's going on here. Basically, the idea is that you have a species pool and invasions uh, try to increase the diversity in the community, but then there's competition, which uh, you know pushes some of the species out by because because of the competition they have negative growth rates. They leave the system, and so this alone balances gives us some diversity that would balance uh, these two processes. Now. At this diversity, the assembled community might or might not be stable. If it's stable, you get a single equilibrium. If it's not, then one of two things can happen. Um, you can either say, okay, I cannot go beyond this uh, stability diversity. I stick to the stability bound and then I get multiple equilibria. Or you can say, I don't care. I'm just going to do dynamical fluctuations, not care about stability at all. And then you get chaos. And it's not an easy question to understand when and which of these scenarios will happen. There's still ongoing work uh, on this question. Um, right. Okay. Uh, uh, Matteo, how am I with time? Just because I can't see my clock. So four minutes. Okay, I, I'll, I'm, I'm wrapping up. Um, okay. So from this, we can generate um, specific predictions for um, what we expect from, for example, uh, these chaotic fluctuations that are endogenously created by the, by the system, as opposed to, for example, environmental fluctuations. Um, for example, uh, you expect the side of the fluctuations to grow continuously with diversity. The fluctuations look almost uncorrelated between different species when the diversity is high, as opposed to the things that you happen, you see in environmental fluctuations. Um, and, and okay, and, and now the next aim, the next big aim is to look at experiments and data and to start looking for these things. Okay, um, I don't have much time and I'd rather leave time for questions. Let me just say that a similar, uh, one thing I want to say is that a similar behavior happens if you have a meta community with, that, with patches connected uh, via migration without external migration. So the system can hold this chaotic behavior without extinctions for a very long time. That's uh, one result. Uh, another thing I want to say is that, you know, people think that uh, resource competition models are so very different that none of this will ever be seen there. That is not the case. So um, one of the issues is that there, there is this, uh, many of you know, the MacArthur model is a model of uh, resource competition. This is a very, very influential model and I, I love it. Um, but it's, it's simplicity, it's, it's simplicity is sometimes uh, um, misleading. If you change the model such that, uh, for example, the resource uh, uptake uh, or, or, or the dependence of growth on, on resources is nonlinear, you can in fact see chaos and you can go beyond the stability bound, which in this case is in fact the competitive exclusion rate. So you can have more species than the competitive exclusion limit um, uh, using these persistent dynamics. And you, it's enough to, in, in certain cases, it's enough to introduce very little nonlinearity and you're already there. So the MacArthur model is in a sense uh, a bit uh, singular. All right, I won't talk about uh, this directional phase. Let me just wrap up and, and open uh, to questions. So what characterizes these high dimensional high diversity uh, assembly models and hopefully also you know, the systems out there is these very few relevant variables. Once you know them, you know how to start seeing what, you know, start uh, putting your puzzle together. There's these deterministic outcomes for things like uh, dynamics and, 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 and properties of the assembled community. There's these sharp transitions between very different qualitatively different behaviors. I talked about these interaction patterns and Again, there's extensions to various directions. Um, you know, happy to discuss uh, whatever is interesting uh, uh, in the questions and afterwards. Yeah, thank you.